Hello, everyone. It's Kate Richburg. Happy Friday. It is Friday, April 12th. We are live. I have so much to share with you. Um, we're going to get to the earrings. We're going to get to my earring designs. We're going to get to all the new bead caps and everything that we are, uh, that we've just launched. Let me take a bracing drink of coffee. Um, let me start off uh, by saying, gosh, so many of you are here. That is the best. I love that people are sharing what they're making. Hello, Patricia. I can't wait to see that float necklace. Um, it is for summer. That's awesome. Post it in the group so we can all see it. Um, Janice is here posting uh, where you can find all of the things that just launched in our uh, new arrivals just in collection. Um, Heather was asking, she loves the earrings. She needs to know more of the discs with holes and if they come in different sizes. My friend, I'm going to tell you all about them. You're going to love them. Um, gosh, everybody's here. I love it. Um, <laughs> the sunshine, Sandra, is encouraging. It's going to get up in the 80s here today in Fresno, California, which, uh, you know, <laughs> our spring, we had a good spring. It's actually going to rain uh, a little bit. And it's actually, I think, going to rain a little bit uh, this weekend, which uh, is uh, hopefully it won't rain too much because it's studio moving day. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a few. Um, let me start off by saying here, let's get some business out of the way. Uh, don't forget folks, you can find us on social all the time. You know, I always tell you this, but we really appreciate it when you like, share, send out all of our uh, content that we do here on beadshop.com. It helps the, uh, all the socials find and boost our content. So if you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like, hit that subscribe. Uh, we really appreciate that. Um, interact with us on our uh, Facebook group, The Bead Table. We'd love to see you over there. Check out our Instagram, tag us at beadshop.com if you make uh, anything from any of our stuff. And hit us up at info at beadshop.com if you have any questions, always. So uh, I'm also doing a giveaway today. We're going to wrap up this weekend. Uh, we're going to wrap up our customer appreciation uh, event this week. Uh, I've been giving away gift certificates on our broadcasts. Drea has been giving away gift certificates uh, in our Facebook group and I think on our Instagram. Um, so make sure you stay tuned for those um, to those social media outlets. But today, uh, let me get over here my little um, banner. We're going to give away three $25 gift certificates today during the broadcast. Uh, you're going to enter hashtag fringe in the comments. So go ahead and start commenting. Uh, we'll give away three of them today. Only good on our live broadcast here today, August, uh, August, <laughs> it's not August, April 12th. Um, and we will email that gift certificate right over to you. Um, and you can shop away. Uh, today, if you saw in your newsletter, I don't know if these glasses got clean or not, but we'll see. Um, in today's newsletter, let me click on over uh, and make sure I've got all of the info correct. But you did see uh, in our Just In, we got a bunch of new bead caps from our buddy Becky Nunn from Nunn Design. They sure are delicious. Uh, we just love them. And I don't know why we haven't had them before, but we uh, are going to play around with some of those today. So those are in the new arrivals. Um, we also have um, an item of the day here today. If you checked out, um, we've been doing um, items of the day all week. Today, my friends, is 20% off of chain, which is great because I'm going to use a little bit of chain 
um, in our pieces today, or at least show you how to use it as well. Let me put that up here so you can see it. Um, it's uh, pieces are marked of uh, the categories marked down on our website. So you don't have to put in any kind of coupon or anything like that. Let me get this banner off so you can see it. Everything is just marked off 20%. So you can couple it with, here I am, with a coupon code, with a reward, with a gift certificate, any of that. But today only, it's 20% off of the chain. So uh, today is the day to shop. Customer appreciation will go on through the weekend. So... Uh, stay tuned to those newsletters so you can see what Drea has up her sleeve. But for now, my friends, please comment hashtag fringe in the comments and we'll do a, a drawing shortly. Um, I wanted to tell you a couple of more things. Gosh, so many of you, there's almost 250 of you watching. So thank you so much for being here. Um, today. Um, yesterday, uh, two things. Drea um, uh, next week is going to be off. She's earned a well, uh, she's taking a well-earned vacation going on a little trip. So I will be customer service next week. So you have to bear with me. And with all the other hats I'm juggling, I'm going to be juggling the customer service hat as well. So I promise I will get back to you ASAP. I will try and honor our getting back to you by end of day. But if for some reason I miss you, my friends, email me again. Okay. Um, it may have fallen through the cracks or whatever. So please, 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 uh, note, uh, that I will be your customer service person next week while Drea, uh, is away, uh, having some fun in the sun. So we wish her a fantastic, uh, weekend. So, or a fantastic week off. Um, that's number one. Number two, I wanted to tell you, I played hooky yesterday. Um, and it was, it was fun. I have to tell you, um, you know, it was one of those days where you're like, you know what, I'm just going to take the day off. I had some friends, you know, the friends that I do a lot of sewing with, we call it our sewing sisters or fiber sisters. Um, some of them live here in Fresno. Some of them live, uh, up, uh, in the Sacramento area, some in the Bay area, some in the Monterey area. Um, and we have such good times when we get together. Well, one of my friends, her name is Piper Berger. She has this great studio that she's opening up in Berkeley. And she had a little preview of it for some of us yesterday. Um, she's having, and I wanted to share it with you. She's having those of you in the Bay area, um, Piper's going to be, uh, Piper and her great daughter, which I'm going to talk to you about Alexis in just a second. Um, her antiques and things are going to be, uh, she's calling it an attic sale. It's on College Avenue, 2991 College Avenue. It is uh, going on today, tomorrow, and Sunday from noon to four. She has a great little space there. Um, and you can follow her, Piper Berger, on Instagram to get more of that info. Uh, but Piper's going to start like having classes and some creative things and cool things like that. Also, her amazing daughter, Alexis Berger. I am wearing the earrings and I'll put them under the camera when um, I show you. Alexis is a lamp worker and you can find Alexis. I'm going to add her info here. Um, you can find her jewelry on Instagram and it's fantastic. Um, she also sells in her Etsy store under Alexis Berger, but follow her on Insta. Her pieces are just so delicious. She's a glass bead maker, makes a lot of glass charms, and she incorporates them in her jewelry really beautifully. She was kind enough yesterday to give us a lamp working demo at the studio over on College Avenue. It made me want to get my torch out immediately and start melting glass. So it was one of those really fantastic, amazing days that you get to hang out with your friends, you get to fill your creative well, and you see some really interesting art. So I wanted to share um, those uh, really cool uh, uh, resources, um, really, really awesome and fun. So we had a great, a great time. Um, 
let's see who, uh, so thank you folks for the fine, uh, the really nice, um, comments. And I see our buddy Gita, Gita, we miss you. It's great when you pop in. I know that you're so busy now, but we are so happy to see you when you get to pop in. Um, Leslie, you had a beautiful piece. I saw that piece over on the bead table, really beautiful, uh, piece that you shared. Um, here is Alexis's, um, uh, website. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And oh, that's awesome. Debbie, you have a torch to make glass beads as well. That's awesome. Isn't it so, uh, satisfying to have the power over melting glass. It's really, really awesome. Um, I also said, um, after I talk about this a little bit for my studio, we'll have our first drawing and then we'll get into the demos. Um, we're having studio moving day tomorrow. So uh, again, you, um, rely on the kindness of your friends, your, my dear friends. Um, and so my buddy Beth, uh, is coming from the Bay area. Someone I've known since I was a kid, BC is coming to help me, uh, pack and move two of my good fiber friends, Laura and Lael are coming. And of course my Chris, we, uh, are finishing packing up some of my metal stuff. And then I've got a mover who's coming tomorrow, one thirty, taking this studio stuff, this stuff, the heavy metal equipment out into my new studio here in Fresno. That also means we're going to be talking about classes from the studio, some broadcasts from the studio. Uh, I'm thinking about Fresno retreat. There's all kinds of cool stuff. So it's all going to be an amazing thing. Janice and I also had some great time together today uh, on the phone and we're talking about um, maybe some components, things that we might be casting, buttons. I don't know. We're, we're putting it out there in the universe. I've already made some inquir inquiries, but it'll be really great to have my own personal space again to work in. It was great having it here right at my house, but you know how it is. It's hard to mix work, even when your work is creative. And when your creative work is creative, right? When your, your making work is creative. So it'll be awesome to actually have those in two spaces, um, to create with. Um, I will be doing uh, some photos. So stay tuned to the social. I'll post some in the bead table. Who knows? I might even go live. You never know. So um, we'll see what happens. But then this area, we're going to, I'm going to kind of reconfigure. So I might have a new background for you to look at and stuff like that. But the chaos of uh, the bead shop <laughs> headquarters here in Fresno is going to get a little more organized, which is going to be awesome. So that's, those are also good things. Let's see. Um, any more questions? Um, Don, yeah, lamp working and working with a torch is just, it's so, so satisfying. Um, Maggie, this is a really good question. Speaking of torches, can you do a best torch for what we do demo? A hundred percent. I can, you know, if you go to my personal, uh, Kate Richburg, YouTube, um, I have a couple of broadcasts that I've done that talk about the different torches. We're going to be moving a lot of my metal smithing equipment um, that I was selling on Kate Richburg. We're going to put it all under the umbrella of beadshop.com. So you'll be able to find some of that really uh, simple and rudimentary uh, metal smithing equipment there. There are a lot of torches out there in the world. Um, and there are a few that I use and have served me very, very well. So thank you for that suggestion. It would be a great, uh, weekend, uh, demo and stuff as well. So just stay tuned to all of our social, um, make sure that you're signed up on the bead shop newsletter. Um, and so we can, uh, communicate, um, over there as well. Okay. So, uh, so don't worry. I got you. I got you. I got you. All right. So many of you have already commented on fringe, um, for the giveaway. Let me see if, uh, just bear with me here just a second. I'm going to move a couple of things around. I'm going to share our giveaway tool. Bear with me here. Uh, share my screen and share the giveaway. 
And <laughs> thanks for all of you are so sweet commenting about my hair. I've done nothing to it other than maybe comb it this morning. So thank you, my dear friends. You are so sweet. Um, oh, good, Maggie. You've watched the demos. That's awesome. Um, I promise I'll have more for you. Um, so let's do our first giveaway, shall we? Uh, let's hit the draw. I've got 90 of you here. Let's take a look and see uh, what we've got. Gloria, Gloria, you are the winner. Congratulations. Uh, if you haven't, or if you would, please email us over at uh, info at beadshop.com just to confirm, and I will get that uh, 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 gift certificate over to you right after the broadcast. Everybody stay tuned because we're going to do some more drawings at the end. Let me take this giveaway tool out. Let me add this stuff in so we can start talking about it. Um, I'm really excited as well. My dear mom is taking on two projects for us. You know that I'm going to be going to France at the end of next month for our bead retreat. Um, my mom is making the participants some special notebooks. I'm going to pull one of those notebooks. Uh, they're just exquisite. I'm going to pull one. And when I get back from France, we'll do a giveaway for those. And those of you who are joining us for our bead retreat here um, in San Juan Batista, it's sold out, but email us to be put on the waiting list um, because we might have spots that open up. Uh, my mom is making beautiful notebooks for you all as well. So I will save one of those uh, and give one of those away after our other retreat as well. My mom is such an accomplished in many, many arts, including paper arts. So she makes these uh, by hand from scratch and they're just delicious. So thank you, Mama, for doing that. And let's get... Oh, and Gloria, there you are. Perfect. Congratulations. Awesome. So let's take a look. Let me uh, get this uh, highlighted. Um, and let's take a look at the things we've got here and the uh, pieces I'm going to share with you and show you um, today. So these discs, um, first, let me talk about, well, let me talk about the discs first. Um, and then we will um, talk about the caps and things that we're carrying. And then we will uh, move into the, uh, the demo. Okay, so much to talk about today. So much, so much. Let me get everything squared away. And drop your questions, friends, into... Um, into uh, the comments and I will try and get everyone's questions answered. So these discs are designed by our buddy, Danielle Wicks. And I know you folks know Danielle. If you don't, uh, Danielle has made some great projects for us here at Bead Shop. She is also, a, she's a fantastic uh, designer. You see her on a lot of social media outlets. She's really, really great. So, she um, is the designer of this component, and we talked a little bit about it. I emailed her uh, last week and was asking her a little bit about the findings and things. And this is something that she has been designing and thinking about for a while. Um, she loves fringe. She loves the, the decorative look of fringe. Um, and these make it so simple to create fringe earrings. Okay, so we're carrying these findings. They come in a little package. They come in a package of six. Uh, I've already used two out of this package. And they're plated, uh, they're pewter uh, discs, and they only come in this silver, but they're hidden. So you don't need to worry about you know, having different colors or whatever, because we hide them under the bead caps. Okay. So, um, oh, and thank you for that. And I'm not sure who's commenting, but thank you so much. You checked out the discs when they were first introduced. We have the best pricing by far. Oh, my friend. Thank you. 
Uh, thank you for that. Um, so these here, let me get a, a pin, a head pin. So you can see these really harken back and Janice can confirm this, you know, you know that we both love um, vintage jewelry so much. Um, these really harken back to uh, the days of vintage jewelry for sure. Um, those cluster earrings, things like that, right? So what this is, is it's a disc that has holes to create fringe or dangles from, okay? So there are two sizes. One has the, let me see, this is the 10 millimeter, this larger one. And this larger one has two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16 um, holes in it. Let me zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And then the eight millimeter, it's a little smaller. You can see two, four, six, it has seven holes in it. So you don't have to use every hole for your fringe right? And you can see here, if I pull this earring, if I pull the legs of this earring fringe back, you can see here, all of the fringe is coming out of the disc. I'm going to show you this. So this has, I used every hole in the, in the disc. So that's two, I just want to make sure, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, there's 15 holes. I thought that 16 was one too many. 15 holes in here because there's an odd amount because there's one hole right there in the center. So there's seven um, and seven and then, or, or, and then that one in the center, or actually five, five and eight, five and seven. Anyway, you, you can see that. Okay. It's kind of hard for me to count. This design is based on a design that Danielle shared um, using these discs. This kind of what I'm calling my fountain earring. I call this sample fountain and it kind of cascades down. I'm going to show you how to make that. But the size you can see here, the size of this, let me zero this. This is the 10 millimeter right here. You can see right there. And the holes will, um, Fit. This is a 22 gauge, about a 21 gauge wire, actually. So um, that will fit in to do any wire wrapping or anything, the head pins or eye pins. Okay. So again, this is the one that I used um, for this larger piece. Now, let me get out the nun caps because these go hand in hand with the nun caps. Uh, let me see if there's any questions that I'm missing. Um, yeah, the streaming material, Leslie, does go through the holes. I'm going to show you this. I know it's Friday. I can't count, right? I'm not, I'm not counting. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh my goodness. I love this and watching since our COVID lives. Thank you, my friend. Um, that's great. Um, let's see here. Anything else? Okay. Um, so let me show you. Uh, Kelly's asking, can you do this without the disc or is the disc necessary? The disc for this uh, style, the way that the fringe and everything lays out, it is really necessary. I'll show you. I mean, you could just make a, a tassel really easy, but the disc does help to make the spaces perfect. So let me show you. Let me show you how that is. Let's take a look at the caps. Let me get the caps out for you. And let's take a look at those. Um, we launched a bunch of different ones. I have been in love with this cap for years and I have no idea why we haven't, um, why we haven't carried it before, but this is our acorn cap. This is an 11.5 millimeter, almost 12 millimeter. Let me zoom in a little. So if you have large 12 millimeter beads, these are perfect to sit on top. But you can see here, I also used it as the cap 
for this fringe. You can use it plain, but I doubled up on the cap with this like daisy, little daisy cap I'm going to show you as well. So let me show you um, what we do here is, and I've got a head pin. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a head pin right down in there. After you've fringed everything, you slide this cap up with a wire, a head pin, or an eye pin. If you're adding chain, let me use an eye pin because you can see you can add that chain to this if you want the center dangle to have chain in it. Right here in the center, all of your other fringe would be fringed, you know, would be strung. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But see how that fringe cap, or that fringe disc sits inside this cap. Okay, so this is the larger one, the 10 millimeter. Okay, right there. And that 10 millimeter, we have more caps that are going to fit. These also would look great with Kumahimo. This is our grande leaf or large leaf. You can see this one is a 14 millimeter. And then the length of this is a 20, a little over 20 millimeter here. And you can see it, and it's nice and heavy. This finding is just exquisite. What I love about Becky's things is, and you know this if you've used Becky's things before, they're so um, sturdy and they really have a beautiful vintage feel to them. But see how the cap sits right down in there? So this larger one also works nicely um, with that finding. Okay. Uh, and we carry them in all the different colors. Uh, we've got this one. This is the curled petal cap uh, that I've got here for you. Now, this curled petal, this is an eight millimeter. Whoops, I just dropped it on the floor. Let me get another one. This one will fit nicely with this smaller cap, the eight millimeter. And you can see how that eight millimeter cap fits, I want to get it nice and seated, fits right down into, um, you know, underneath inside that cap right there. So really nice. So that's that one. That goes with that one there. Then we have this little daisy one that I used. And can you see how I used it in this earring as well? I put two of the acorn caps together and I actually used a little bit of zap glue to glue the edges together a bit. You don't do it a lot because tension holds it together, but just a little helping hand with a little bit of zap here. And then I use that daisy cap here and here. Look at how beautiful it looks on that Baroque pearl out of my collection, right? Um, those daisy caps, let me grab them. Uh, here they are. Nope, that's the acorn. Here it is. These are also eight millimeter. So let's see how they look with that eight millimeter disc. And you can stack these too. Let me just show you. Let me put it on this disc first so you can see it. Okay. So if you needed something that had just a small little cap over the top, See how that fits in there beautifully, right? So that works. But you can also use this cap. I like, um, I'm going to put this on. I like stacking caps. And when you stack caps, it automatically gives you just a really fantastic vintage look. Can you see this is with the antique copper? That's with the antique gold. Let me stack this one. You can stack this. Oh, I want to stack it with the eight. This, this, and this one on the top. Look at that, how pretty that looks stacked. Just gives it a little extra flair. You could stack this large one, this one, 
on the grande. Look at that. Look at how botanical that looks. Isn't that gorgeous? Um, you could stack this other one on. So I would advise you, yeah, look at that. Nice luscious tassel out of that. And this is a big, you can see how big um, this opening here is about 10 millimeters, 12 millimeters or so right here. So it, you'll get some substantial room for that. So all of these caps, what I would recommend is getting a couple of packages of <clears throat> the 10 millimeter discs, getting a couple of packages of the eight millimeter discs and some of the caps in all different uh, metal colorways. Sorry, I'm not, um, not focused. Um, and then you can mix and match and play around, right? Like this one, you can see I've used the two acorn caps and two of the daisy caps here. So play around. They really will set your creative imagination on fire with those. Let me see if there's some questions. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Um, let me see. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was working and I didn't have, I didn't um, focus. So I'm so sorry about that, my friends. So there we go. Let's see. Oh, and I'm seeing the, the BIB. Don't worry, we will. Um, thanks for letting us know. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. If you got demoted for any reason, you should never get demoted, I don't think. So don't worry. We'll figure it out. Okay. Don't worry. We'll do that. Um, okay. Let me, so let's get into the fringe portion of this. Okay. But thanks for letting us know about the VIB, uh, friends. We will, uh, we'll take care of it. Don't worry. Um, it's a good question, Maggie, about these uh, lever backs. I use the lever back on this because this is what I had. And I used it on this one because this is what I had. You can use any, um, any of the ear wires. If you stayed tuned to the bead table yesterday, Janice did a terrific post talking about the new ear wires we're going to be getting in, including uh, niobium, really beautiful colors. So you can use any. Uh, ear wire you prefer. Okay. So let me switch backgrounds. Let me get my very messy bead tray here. Just bear with me here a second and let's jump in and start this demo. Okay. <clears throat> get this out of the way. Get this. Get these. <laughs> I want to show you a couple of ideas here. So just bear with me here just a second. It is a pearl on the end of this uh, earring. This is a Baroque pearl from my stash. Um, and uh, I just drilled it with my Dremel to be a little bit bigger. So I got that 22 gauge wire inside here. Um, but doesn't that just look so vintage? I just love it. I'm going to make another pair. Uh, like this. What I've been doing was, since I only, I was wearing it as a mismatched earring set, these two together, and it was kind of fun. Uh, okay, so let me get my, um, let me get my info here. Just bear with me here just a second. Okay, so what I used for this earring, and it's called Fountain, okay? And you can find it, um, the project, on our website under projects. It's also on the homepage right now. I'm going to get rid of kind of this random grouping here. Um, and what I used was I got a three... One, two, three, four colors 
of 11 knots here. And I got one color of 15 knots. Now, if you want to bump up a size, you can. Okay, so if you want to move these to eight aughts and these to 11, you can. Okay. Um, but I'm going to show you with the 11s. I love how the 11s look. Okay. So what I did with this component, here it is. I'm going to start on the inside ring. Okay. So I am going to lay out, this is what really makes it helpful. And this is a tip from Danielle. I'm going to put my 15s here in the center. Okay. And you can see the project page. Uh, thank you, Janice, for putting that up. It's called Fountain, so you'll see everything that, I, uh, that I've used. My 15s are going to be here in the center. Okay. And I'm going to figure out what you can see here on my strand. I've got a color order. So I'm going to use the 4693, the glazed rainbow pistachio. I'm going to put that size 11 over here. This will be in my number one position. In my number two position, I want to make sure. Let me go in a little tighter with this. Sorry, I'm juggling like a bunch of different stuff. And I'll try and see if I go out of focus. Okay, that looks better. Okay. Then my next color is, that's my number one. My number two is this 4473, the Duracoat Opaque Fennel. I'm going to put a little pile there. Okay. My third pile It's going to be the uh, Rainbow Kiwi, the 4698. I'm going to put that in this next little pile. And again, this is a Danielle tip. I just thought it was so clever. Then I'm going to use this 2028. I don't have the color name on this tube, but this blue, whatever this color is, 2028, all in 11 knots. Okay. So. Here's my 15. I'm going to go from my 15. And you can see here in the dangle, I've done the color order. Let me put it this way so it's matching color order. And I've kind of done an ombre kind of a feel. The 15s go in between each of these 11s. Now here at the end, you can use anything. I, of course, wanted a little shadow. No surprise. So I got the brass ones. I'm going to put those over here. And that matches the brass caps that I used. Okay. Now the needle, since I'm using 15s, I used a size 12 needle. Okay. So uh, that's what I'm going to string. And I used Fireline. You can use KO. But I thought that these threads rubbing up against the disc, I felt like I wanted the strength of Fireline. And I used, I think I used the four pound, right? The four. So let me go ahead and string my needle or needle my thread is how we like to do it here on bead shop. and we'll start stringing. Now I put a long piece of thread here. I'm gonna show you how to add thread. It's actually pretty easy to do 
I'm having trouble with this. I always have trouble with the size 12 I. So let me get it more in my vision range. There we go. Sorry about that, friends. We're all ready to go there. Okay. So for the first strand, we're going to work on the inside ring to start. Okay. So this first one, we are going to have um, seven beads to start. Okay. So when we go through this loop, let me get a little piece of paper so you can see this. I'm all out of note paper. Let me grab a piece of paper here <clears throat> because I want to show you this. This will be a little bit easier for you to see. Here's kind of a piece of paper that's a little worse for wear, but <clears throat> Let me move this over my coffee so I don't spill it. And I'll make our little guide. Let me get my pen. Okay. <clears throat> if this is our disc, I'm going to greatly enlarge it. Okay, and I've got my hole in the center, and I have one, two, three, four, five. One, actually, I need to go in here. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so my first round, let me change my pen color. If this is my first hole that I'm using, this is my first one, I'm going to put of each color, I'm going to use seven. Okay. And as I go around, I'm going to add one for each color range. This is going to be times eight. This is going to be nine. This is 10 of each bead, and we'll finish with 11, okay? This is round one, okay? Round two, I should have put that over here, but I'll just turn it over. Round two, Here's our center ring. Here's our five. One, two, three, four, five. And we have <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten around the outer rung. Right? Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. Ten around the outer rung. That's right. Five in the center, ten around the outside. Uh, so let me draw them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're not even evenly spaced, but it's close enough. Okay. So times 10, we're going to start our first outside. So this is the outside ring. We're going to start and we're going to make this one. This is a short strand. So if this is number one, we'll go out here. What did I say? So this is going to be times two of each color in this first ring. Okay. Then we'll go around to times three times four, times five, times six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay? So you'll have your inner strands and your outer strands cascading. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, there we go. It's more in the shot there. Okay, you can't really, I kind of, um, what do I want to say? I kind of, um, at the end, uh, one or two of them, when I strung them, might have been off in number, but it doesn't really matter. It's super forgiving because this, um, this cascade here, you know, it's all bunched together. Okay. And yeah, if you do want them shorter, you could leave out the 15 or you could just make the whole thing shorter, right? This is the count. This is the inner ring. No, this is the outer ring. Let me open this up. And this is the inner ring. That's round one, and this is round two. Okay, let me uh, zoom out. So this whole thing, and you can screenshot this. Okay. So we start with two, and we progressively, and the way to think about this is you progressively just add one plus one bead for each uh, fringe. Okay? That's basically what you do. You can double them up, like let's say you did two twos, two threes, two fours, two fives. That would take up this and two sixes. That would take up this whole round and it would be shorter. Okay? So just double up. So instead of going long all the way to 11 beads, I would just double up this number right? And then um, you could half this number over here too. We start with seven. So you could start with, you know, it would go to five. So you can start, you know, two, three, four, five, six, again, along the outside. So your earring is a lot shorter. Okay. But the, the idea is you choose a number to start with. You start from the inside ring, in this one, we start, we start, we're starting with seven of each color. You can also make fewer colors, right? I've used four colors for this. One, two, three, four. You can just omit and use two colors or use four colors, but use a shorter repeat. Okay. Does that make sense? Play around with it. There's no, um, there's no wrong way to do this. My advice is when I made this one, I took it, Danielle's advice. I started with the inner ring one, two, three, four, five, beaded those. Then I went to the outer ring, started with the short end, and went all the way down to the long end here. Okay, so let me show you how that works. Um, the inner ring on the second uh, one. I think I numbered it. This is This one isn't one here. But this is 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay. Does that look right? That's right. This is the center hole. So that's a C for center. This is your C for center. And then here, I think I started, uh, oh, I see what you're asking. This is 7. That's 8. That's 9. That's 10. And that's 11. Okay, but you can shift it again. Okay, so it doesn't matter. I, um, the 11 goes down here and the two is here. You could start your seven and your two together. That actually might be what you want to do. It doesn't really matter. They look great. Okay, so let me show you. <clears throat> let me put this aside and let's start. So I'm going to start with my number seven on the inner ring. There's this here. 
And that's a good question, Terry. I'm going to show you. Um, the top of the disc does kind of look like the backside of an embroidery project, but it's not too bad um, because your threads are kind of thin. It's all hidden under the disc. You don't really have to worry about it. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to I'm going to string some up here so you can see this. Okay. Um, yeah, and it's not really complicated. Once you get into it, Leslie, you'll be in good shape. Okay. So let's start. I'm going to start with my color. I'm going to try not to screw this up. And I'm going to start with seven. So I'm going to go here to seven. Uh, and I think I just started, did I start with a 15? I didn't. I just started with an 11. So one and one, two. So just go back and forth. Three, four. five, six, and seven. Okay. Now I'll put on a 15 and I'll go to my next color. Be careful. You don't want to slide these off. I don't have a stopper bead here, but, um, oh, and, and I'll show you what, what I, what I do. So here's this I've gone through. Now I've added my, did I add my 15? Anywhere? No. So I'm going to add seven more. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I did add my 15. It was on the needle hiding. I felt it. So what I do in that case when I have to take these off, I hold them between my fingers. I'll get that 15 off of there. And I'll slide that back in. It's like it never happened. There we go. How many did I have on here now? Two, four, five, six, seven. On to the next color. And again, you don't have to have these 15 knots in here but I love the way, and if you'll notice, I did all of these kind of matte, and then I did my 15 knot shiny, so it kind of really popped. I really love how this has a shine to it, right? Um, two, four, six, seven. Let's go to our last color. Now, our last color, we're going to put on one, and there's a 15 in there, I'll grab it. Two, three, four, five. Now, what I did for number for bead number six and seven was let me slide this down. I put two shadows on. So I put instead of, oh, I didn't put a 15. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So I replaced the number, the 15 aught bead, 15 aught bead number six and 15 aught bead number seven with a, um, with a little shadow. Yeah, let me get in here tighter. There we go. Is that better, everybody? Thank you. Um, so now, instead of the 15, I'll put on the shadow. I'll use another 11, put on the shadow, another 15, and my stopper, or another 11, and my stopper bead is going to be a 15. Can you see that? Now, since this 15 is a stopper, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip going back through this 15, right? And I'm going to slide all of these 
through. my little line. Sometimes what I do when I'm trying to go through this, because you don't want to miss any beads, right? Is I come in and I hold them between my fingers to line them up. And it makes it a little bit easier to string back up through that, this fringe. You folks know how much I love a sharps needle, a size 10, right? A short one that just won't work for this. You need the long beading needle and you need a thinner needle because those 15s are going to have two, well, all of these will have two passes of thread and the needle has to get back through them. You could even pop down to a 13 if you wanted. Once in a while, a 15 is a little tight right? It's a little tight, but, um, but you just kind of have to wiggle it down. Okay. So you can see what I did was, let me go to that number seven. Two, six, seven, two, three. So you can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got my seven um, 11s on, and then my shadows replace the 15s there at the bottom. Okay? Does that make sense? Color three. Do I only have five beads of that? Two, four, five. Oh, well, it's done. I'm not going back. See, like I said, sometimes I screwed it up, but I, I never go back because in this huge thing of fringe, it is never going to be noticed. Okay, so don't sweat it. I'm going to come back in. I'm going to slide all of this through the first time, you know, of any one of these passes is always the most difficult. So just bear with me here. I'm going to show you how I set this up. There we go. Okay, so here's my first leg. Okay, and I need a little more space or a little less thread up here. So let me pull this down. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, <clears throat> I'm going to put this, this, remember, this is the inner ring. So on the inner ring, I'm going to thread the end that doesn't have the needle. I'm just going to pick one. doesn't matter. Okay. And then I'm going to, oh, the Charlottes would look amazing with this. I don't, I have no idea why I didn't use Charlottes. I don't know. And then the needle goes up through that same hole. Okay, so that is my first leg. Okay. So now the trick to this first one, I've got to get another leg on here. And the trick to this first one is not pulling this off while I bead the next one. So you could have a stopper bead or something on here, but I'm just going to go, go for it. I'm going to go to my next one. Let's see. It looks like I'm rotating this way. So this is my seven. I'm going to put on eight now. Okay. And it's going to get a lo little loose or whatever, but I'm going to show you how I deal with that after I do my second fringe. So I go through and see, so the, the, the thread bridge is up top here, right? What you don't want to do, see if I pull it too tight, see your fringe leg is crinkled, right? It's too tight. So you just want to make sure to keep the tension so it's snug, but you're not pulling on it like it's a lifeline, okay? 
So I'm going to add my eight. So I'm going to try and do this a little more at Kate's speed. Okay, so bear with me here. There's this. Let me see if I can get all the numbers right, too. We'll see. So one of each, back and forth. And the way Danielle has this laid out with her colors, you know that, or at least I know I'm always starting in the middle and then starting to, from the left and going to the right. It helps me keep my colors in order. Two, four, five, that's five. Six. Seven. My dexterity is failing me a little bit today. I'm sorry, my friends. There's eight. Now we'll go to our second pile. Make sure I've got that 15 on there. I do. Yeah, I think this is the Willow 15s, isn't it? The shine, it's so gorgeous. After I show you how to tie this off, I'm going to bump up to an A dot on the smaller disc because I want to show you a couple more um, ideas. And then I'm going to show you how to close all this off. It's very, very simple, actually. Not difficult. Two, four, six, seven, eight. Slide it on down and see now the stopper, the 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 little um call. I've we've been calling them colanders. The little disc, you know, keeps the beads from moving around. Okay, Terry, that's a good question. Is there any rule of thumb for duster length? Um, I don't, I don't know. Whatever you like, I guess. Um, I wouldn't. I mean, what are, you know me, I like a long earring. So um, I'll put these on, uh, the one that I finished. I'll put it on so you can see it. It's pretty long. I'll measure it for you. But, you know, I've got short hair. I like to wear a statement earring. So that works with my jewelry statements that I like to make, right? You make your jewelry statement as personalized as you want. Two, four, six, eight. Good. So that means I'm going to put on six. See, here's that 15. It doesn't quite want to go. So you kind of have to come in and pop it over, make it. Um, yeah, come on, 15. If it doesn't want to pop over, sometimes you just have to take it out. We'll put it in a discard pile. My discard pile is on the floor. Make sure that this 15 goes through. It does and put these two back. There we go. So if this is eight, I'm going to do six. And we're going to replace two of the 15s with two of the shadows. You need a good surface for this. Our design boards are nice, two, four, six for these. Um, and you need some good light. So here's six. They're about as long, Leslie, as I think my Alfred earrings are. I love those earrings. I was just, I have them sitting here right in my studio space. I get to see them every day when I work. I do wear them. Sometimes they're really fun. I love them. The nice long earring. So here's my last one. There's my 15. Yeah, you can use anything for the end. I think that's a great suggestion. Using true twos, two millimeters or three millimeters for the end. That would be great. It would weight them very nicely as well. I was looking to have these all kind of be uh, kind of the same diameter or dimension. So um so that's why I use something that was a little smaller. But again, uh, use what makes you excited. There's our friend, Danielle. You may think this is so cool, but it's only cool because it was your idea and your inspiration, my friend. We love these. And if you've been seeing all of the comments 
Everyone has commented about how great they think these are, what a treasure you are in the jewelry world, 100% truth. So thank you so much for joining us today and commenting and uh, being so creative and so um, great with your ideas. If you have any tips or tricks or anything you want to toss into the comments, Danielle, please feel free. But we're really excited to finally debut these. Get these back in. That 15 was a little tight. It's the, the stringing is pretty simple, but the, um, but the, uh, going back up the strand is always a little bit of a challenge, but once you have this disc on, see how it acts like a stopper and you're good to go here. Okay. So there, and I'm going to go through that hole. Okay. Like that. And so now this is when I come in and I tighten up this first, um, this first, these first two legs so I can kind of keep working. So I'm going to pull all of these so they're tight. Pull that little thread bridge, pull that up, and then see which one of these. Just going to tighten it. Oh, look. Look at that. What did I say? Oh, no, it's just caught, I think. Hang on. Yeah, it's just caught. Sorry, sorry. I didn't make a mistake. There we go. Good. Slide it down. I was trying real hard not to miss any. <clears throat> Let me get this tightened. Now remember, we don't want to tighten these fringe legs too tight here, okay? Because we want them to swing really nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get in really tight here so you can see this. I hope you can. Let me zoom out, zoom in. Okay. So see how I've done these first two legs. I want to secure them before I go any further because I don't want this strand. Um, it's a little hard to see. I have a white background here. It's a little hard to see. Um, let me put this white underneath it. But if I secure this, I'm just going to do an overhand or a, a, a square knot, right over left, left over right, and down, okay? I can add, and again, I don't want it to be super tight because I want these legs to sit nice and straight. I'm not going to add any glue here yet, okay? Because this is what you're going to continue to do. Remember our little diagram here. You're going to continue to add. That was seven. I did eight. Then we'll go nine, 10, 11. So all of these interior uh, holes are beaded, right? They each have a fringe down them. Then what you're going to do, you're going to end up so you're right here on this hole. The last thread that you bring up, you tie together with this first thread. Tie another right over left, left over right. Then you're going to glue it. I'm going to use some GS Hypo and glue. Okay. After everything has been glued and dried really well, then I'll be able to cut the legs off. And that's it. Right. Then I'll do the same thing for this outer ring. Go up, in and out, in and out, in and out. I'll have my beginning thread. I'll have my ending thread. And I'll tie them together just like I did here. Add some GS Hypo, let it sit, and you're fine. Okay? Um, what you could say, let's see what Diane's asking here. Um, could you tie a knot at the top of the disc when you bring those first two threads? Yeah, so that's what I did right here. Uh, you know, I, I didn't bring the first two. When I brought the first two up, 
I didn't tie a knot, Diane, because the knot would have just fallen through. And I didn't want to come up, go down in one hole and come up in another hole or else this fringe would have sat funny. So I wanted my thread to come up here for my first strand, my thread to come up in the second hole for my second fringe, and then I wanted to tie those two together. You could certainly experiment, but, um, but I find that this, you know, it's a little fussy at the beginning, but then you're good to go. Okay, and so you'll just continue around, continue around. So I'm going to put this one aside for a minute. And let me get some, I have some other beads. This is kind of a, let me move my little, let me move my first color away here. And let me put this aside. Those are the 15s. I don't want to mix up these colors. There we go. If you don't have these little triangles, obviously they're real handy. And some nice little bowls. We've had these bowls for forever, but just little bowls that stack. You can put your beads in there. All right, there we go. So yeah, the outer fringes are the shorter ones. So the longer ones are here. Here's round one. The longer it goes from seven all the way up to 11. Can you see that? And then here, let me zoom back a little bit. Go back a bit. You'll start, I start with the shortest one and go down to the longest one. So two all the way back up to 11. Okay. So the short ones are on the outside, they go to long, and then there's just a short grouping of seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 in the center. Okay. Uh, all right, let me get, here's these. Um, I'm going to actually continue to use this needle that I was using. I'm going to cut that away. This just has a round this just has five, two, four, six around the outside, one in the center. Okay. So I am going to, I'm going to make all of these the same length. Okay. I'm not going to do a waterfall. I'm going to do these. I'm going to do, where did I put them? We're going to go long a little bit, everybody. Why don't we have a moment? Well, let me get this set up. Then I'll do another drawing. And then those of you who have to go can go and can watch the rest of this demo later. I'm too full of ideas to stop now. Sorry. That's just how it is. Where is the strand? Uh, give me a second. There's just a huge pile of beads. Here we go. Janice is using some of these little double spacers for her pieces. I also, we just launched some of our bugles. I'm going to use this 2021 um, in this nice matte white. And then I'm going to use, where is it? My short, here it is. You remember these really delicious dangles that we just launched. This copper right here. Maybe I'll do it in a two color. I don't know. Maybe. No, I like how that copper looks. I don't know. We'll see what I pick up. Okay. So let me cut these guys open. Now these are eights that I've got going on here. These little copper... These, we've got these little um, like stacked spacers, which I love. We've got these bugles. Let me just make up a pattern here real quick. And I want some hishi. They, so they don't have to all be seed beads, right? You could string anything here. Okay, 
So now those are all laid out. Let me see if there's, okay, there's a couple of questions. Yep, we will do Janice right here. We'll do the rest of the giveaways now and then I'll continue to go. So a uh, couple questions. The TGBE kit is going to be released a week from today. They'll be in the newsletter. I've got the three colorways. They're going to look really great. I'm super stoked about them. Um, so stay tuned to the newsletter for those. The Great Beat Extravaganza, we start with our preview night next Friday. And then my segment is Saturday. Uh, and we go into Sunday. So friends, if you haven't commented yet, make sure to win that $25 gift certificate. We'll put hashtag fringe in the comments. Let me put myself up here. Let me add this one and we'll do our two drawings. So those of you who have to dash at noon can dash. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, in celebration, of our customer appreciation week. That's you. Let's go ahead and draw. Okay. Let's see. Let's see who's coming. Nadine, congratulations. I've taken a screenshot, but go ahead and make sure to email us at info at beadshop.com and I'll pop your gift certificate in after the broadcast ends. You can use it on anything you'd like here at Bead Shop. Uh, let me put this one back up and let's do one more drawing, shall we? All righty. And we've got Maggie. Maggie, you are the winner of our last $25 gift certificate, our final one today. Congrats. So again, shoot that email right over to info and uh, I will email you. Uh, you'll get your coupon, your gift certificate code to use. You can use it anytime. Uh, in any configuration, any amount, but it'll be for $25 for you. Okay. Congrats. That's awesome. All right. Let's get back to this demo. Uh, let me take this out. Let me put this in. I'm going to run over just a little bit, but I want to show you um, how this works with things that are other than seed beads. And you can kind of play around with your, uh, just with your beads. Right. So I haven't really thought this out much other than um, I've got some A dots right underneath this disc, though. I'm going to start with 11s because the disc is kind of small. Right. So excuse my reach across here, but I want everything to fit nicely on the disc. The eights should fit, but I'm just going to pop down. A little, a little slower. So Maggie, email to info. Let me get that banner up. Info at beadshop.com. Right there. Just to make sure that I have your email address, that I'm sending it over to the right person, and I'll take care of it uh, right after the broadcast. Okay. Okay. Um, so let me go ahead. I'll put this on to start because I'll try and hold everything together. And I'm going to start with an 11. Maybe I'll start with two 11 knots. A bugle. some copper, another bugle. I'm going to repeat that motif, a copper, an A dot, a copper, a bugle. And as my stopper, I'm going to use 
this he, she piece. So watch what I do here. I think maybe I want three. It's looking a little short. Let me add one more of these segments. Copper, A dot, copper, bugle. Now, he, she slice. I'm going to go around the he-she so the he-she um, lays flat. Okay, let me zoom in a little bit here. A little bit. And now we're going to go back up that leg. Okay. So I skip the he-she. And I go through and back through those 11s. Now, again, you can use any size beads you want on these. I think just at the beginning, having a little bit of a taper, which is why I use those 11s, might serve me well when I'm trying to put all these together. Okay. Let me untangle. Is it? Oh, what's going on here? Oh, I think I split the thread. There we go. Slide this up. That looks good. Now let's do this next leg. Okay. We are carrying so many of these metal beads now by the strand. Janice has a beautiful project coming up, a beautiful wrap she and Drea are creating. Um that are gonna look so nice with our metal bead strands. We have plans to add a few more of them. Um, they're so handy. These are little, these copper ones that I'm using, but the hole is pretty big. Um, and I like the way that they look. I like this matte bugle bead. Oh, whoops, look what I didn't do. See, look, I came through the top. It's because I'm rushing. I need to go back down. So let me just take this out. I'm going to hold it. Let me see if I can go. I'm going to go needle, eye of the needle back through. It's no big deal. Sometimes that happens when I get so excited and I'm chatting about it with you. Let's take these off. Through, back through the eye of the needle. so I don't screw anything up. There we go. All right, like this. Yeah, you all noticed I didn't go through the other hole. All right, so I'm holding that. I'm going back down through the other hole. Let me do that over here. Bring it back into the thing. Okay. There we go, I've gone back down through the hole. Let me see if I've managed to hold these all together. Yes, okay, good. And there we are, all right, that's okay. It happens to all of us, my friends, all of us. Go through, get that done. Now we'll go back up. And this disc is definitely smaller, so you've got a little less real estate to work with, which again is why I use those 11s up at the top. And through the hole in that disc. And slide it up. Now I'm gonna tie that knot again up here so this beginning strand doesn't undo for me okay and i want to make sure that this is loose enough so that little those little he she beads are you know going sideways looking sideways 
So let me go back down through the next hole. Two. Let me get this one going. You could also go back and forth in size. You could make one leg long, one leg short. So it has a little bit of size variation on there. Just depends on what you like. Whoops, that went backwards. That's why I like to periodically check my pattern there. You can see I need one more copper. I need to get a few more of those off the strand. Yeah, it is a cool finding, Shepley, for sure. Um, it's a nice, it's really sturdy. Um, it's not bendable or pliable. So however you use it, even if you use it with some metal beads or things that are a little more, a little heavier, um, I don't think you're going to have any trouble with it. Right now, we do have plenty in stock. It is something that we are going to continue to carry here at Bead Shop. If you are watching this later, not on the live broadcast, and we happen to be out of them, Rest assured, we will get them back in. Just put yourself on the notification list. And you'll get a notification when they come back into stock. So there's three. Again, you can pull it tight, but then fix that tension a little bit. Okay. Look at how nice those blue beads all kind of line up together. So let's go down our next one. And then I'll show you, I won't finish the last two. I'll show you what cap I'm gonna use and what I'm gonna do in the middle. Okay, so just bear with me here a second. go. And when you're doing something like this, and why I'm so stoked we got the bugles in, we're having another big launch of bugle beads. You know, we carry some, but we don't carry a lot of them. Um, and both Janice and I like to use them. Drea likes them. We all like to use the bugles. Um, they're fun. They add a lot of fringe. Emily likes to use bugles in her fringe and her brick stitch earrings. Um, so we've added some really great colors. Those are going to come out in just a couple of weeks. I think you'll enjoy working with those. I have a specific bugle related project for them. Um, but they're a nice bead and sometimes I just... I don't really forget about them, but they're not in the forefront of what I'm doing. And I like the contrast. This is that ivory, the matte ivory bugle glass color. These are all Miyuki, Japanese. So um, they're a nice size and nice shape, very even. Well, see, there we go. The thread came out, so. It was time to stop here anyway for the moment. Now let's say though, let me show you how I might add thread here. Okay. If they do have kind of an Egyptian feel, right? These blue really kind of look like Egyptian faience beads, the blue glass. Let's say that I was running out of thread. Okay. Like this. Um, and 
I just need to start a new thread because I've, I've run out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thread up here. I'm going to bring all my threads together. Tighten this up. Make sure that all of your fringe is sitting how it should be sitting. Got a little bit of space there that I don't want. So it's this one. You kind of have to make sure, see there's just a little bit of space here and I don't want that space. So I think it goes to this fringe. So I'm gonna pull this fringe down, see how it tightens that one up, right? And now I pull this one up so it tightens. This other one over here also needs tightening. So I'm gonna pull this down like that and then pull on this to pull that up. There we go. Okay. Now again, we don't wanna pull it so tight that our little he, she beads aren't gonna sit flat. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tie these strands off, okay? They're not sitting next to each other, but it makes no difference whatsoever, okay? Because I'm just gonna end these strands right here, tie them off, and then when I have to start a new thread, I would just start it off like I did in the beginning, right? I'm going to add a little bit of glue here. I'm going to add the GS Hypo, not the Zap. And what I would do if this were not demo time, I wouldn't cut any of this thread away yet. I'd let that glue dry. Then I'd come in and I'd cut the long tails away. Okay. But... Instead, what I'm going to do for this moment, I think I'm going to do this one. Uh, let me get an eye pin. Let me get some tweezers, some uh, pliers. I'm going to get my, whoops, I said I was going to use this one, didn't I? I'm going to put this dangle on. And I'm going to do another. I'll probably just do this on these. That one looks like a double. I'm going to single. I don't need this to be too long. Maybe one more. Maybe I'll put that long one up at the top. And then I'm going to go through that center hole. Okay, I'm going to cut, since these are have been glued, I'm going to cut them a little bit shorter so my threads don't get in the way. I'll just add more thread when I want to finish the last two dangles. Okay, so can you see how Let's check the side view here. Look at how cool this looks over that dangle, right? Doesn't that look good? Maybe I want this dangle to be a little bit shorter. So let me take a couple of these beads off. Maybe I'll do it like that. Let's test it. Get it in the center disc, center hole. That's better, a little a little shorter, maybe not quite that short. We were almost right. Okay. Now let's find a cap. Okay, so it would look like this. That's like the front end. Can you see that? Look at how cool that is. Now, if you wanted, this has such a big loop on it right here, right? Um, but you could, if you wanted this to have even more movement, this could be chain right here too. Let me also show you what this might look like um, with the cap. So let me get, maybe I'll get a copper. 
Do I have one sitting here? Let's see how this covers it up. We'd need to use, since this is the eight millimeter disc, we need to use a disc that's a little shorter. That looks cool. It looks a little long though. I'm gonna put the daisy on it. Uh, the daisy topper, where is it? <laughs> so many caps. There we go. I think I like that better. And maybe I would use it in copper. Maybe I wouldn't. But look at how cool that looks. So now what I could do, let me get some of the hishi on here. Look at how that hishi looks along the top. Doesn't that look cool? I could also do one hishi like that. That looks good as well, right? So that is, let me lay this down so you can see how that looks. You also don't have to put this dangle, this mian dangle in the center. I kind of like that little point underneath there. You could make it longer so that dangle, you know, the fringe is around the top and the dangle is down there at the bottom. You could take this out completely and just make one long fringe, you know, maybe make the center one a little bit longer and have that dangle. The world is your oyster on these, but I think I am loving this. I love the mix of this tribal bead plus the caps plus this little business up top. I think I want the two hishi stacked and that blue at the top. So let's take a look and see this one that I finished right here. I just came in. You can see I did a little um, bicone bead. I came in and I did a wire wrap at the top like this. Okay. So however it is that you want to mix it. I also grabbed some of our Miyuki pearls. These Miyuki pearls would look cool around the bottom here. These are the, the six Miyuki pearls I love. This would look good. Janice, I think that is the eucalyptus. 8-2376. I think that's what that is. Let me... Um, Go ahead and zoom that in so you can see, okay? But the world is your design oyster on these, my friends. So I hope this gave you some good ideas, some good knowledge about how these discs work, the size that you can use, right? But anything that you can put and, and string stitch through these little discs, go for it, right? Yeah, you could. You could color. The pewter takes um, patinaing really well. You could color it with a um, gold metallic Sharpie for sure. Um, it's really hidden in there though. Once you kind of have all the beads and everything underneath there, um, it's hidden up pretty well, but it just depends. I love, look at those hishi like this that are on their sides. I just, oh, I love them. I think they, I think they look great. So I'll go ahead and finish stitching this up um, so we can have a photo of it for you. But this is a great time to take a screenshot here. Um, and friends, make sure to remember to let me get this up to follow us on all of our socials uh facebook we'd love to see you over there at our facebook group our uh pinterest our instagram hit that like subscribe and notification button over on our youtube channel a big thank you to danielle wicks for popping on today and watching this broadcast we just love these pieces and we just love you so thank you so much always for your creativity if you folks have questions shoot us an email over at info at beadshop.com do remember that uh next 
week. Drea is out, so I'll be responding to your customer service questions. If you do have questions, um, toss them our way and we'll do our best to help you as always. Uh, stay tuned through the weekend. We've got two more days of our customer appreciation going on for you. So we've got today, our chain is all uh, 20% off. It's marked down that 20%. So you can add that with a coupon code or a gift certificate or whatever you like, but it'll be 20% off through tonight, uh, Friday, April 12th at midnight. We'll have two more, two more big sales on Saturday and Sunday to go. So uh, check your newsletters for those. Uh, thanks again, folks. I will see you next week with another fantastic project. I believe it's Emily that's coming up. She has a really, just a gorgeous necklace um, that you folks are gonna love. Um, and so I'll see you then with M. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a fantastic and creative weekend. Talk to you soon.